Hello, my name is Dennis O'Brien. I'm a lawyer and founder of the Space Treaty Project, a scientific and educational nonprofit based in Northern California. Our mission is to give people hope and inspiration by helping the nations of the world to build a common future. I started the project in 2017 because humanity is approaching a historical crisis as it prepares to leave the home world, when just a slight shift can have a major impact for centuries. The closest historical example we have is the age of exploration and imperialism that began in the late 15th century and lasted all the way through the 20th. That period was marked by seemingly endless war, violence, and neglect as the world's great powers competed for limited resources and political hegemony, culminating in a Cold War that pitted blocks of nations against each other. It was also marked by the rise of economic interests, mostly corporations chartered by their governments, who sought exclusive control over resources to maximize their profit and power. Anyone who has been following the developments in outer space knows that we are on the verge of repeating the same pattern. There are already two blocks forming, one based on the United States and its Artemis mission partners who have signed the Artemis Accords, and another based on a partnership between Russia and China for building an international lunar research lab. As with the Cold War, there is also a large group of non-aligned countries with growing space capabilities, with India leading the way. Also like the Cold War, the United Nations and much of civil society are working to find ways to secure the benefits of outer space for all without destructive conflicts and exclusive monopolies. Most recently, the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, COPUIS, has created a working group on legal aspects of space resource activities with a mandate to assess the benefits of further development of a framework for space resource activities, including by way of additional international governance instruments. Since 2017, the Space Treaty Project has been working on a model resource agreement for the Moon Treaty that will support private space resource activity while protecting essential public policies. After extensive peer review and public comment, we have developed a 10-paragraph agreement that is based on four organizational principles. One, the agreement must be comprehensive in scope and support all private activity. Two, the grand bargain, trade private property rights for public policy obligations. Three, build upon and integrate current institutions and processes. Four, defer issues currently at impasse, such as monetary sharing of benefits, for future action by the state's parties. For those who don't like the Moon Treaty, the agreement can also stand on its own or be integrated into another document with minor changes. It was designed to provide the minimum governance necessary for the development of outer space resources without establishing a new supranational government like the one in the Convention on the Law of the Seas. It is only by international agreement that we can achieve polycentric governance without a new government. The most important component of the agreement is the requirement for all countries, including their nationals, to share outer space resources. This is done by sharing access to resources in place, in situ, and by conducting all space resource activity in such a manner so that others can safely access the same resources. This commitment to sharing will avoid exclusion zones while supporting the principles of free access and non-appropriation 
that are enshrined in Articles 1 and 2 of the Outer Space Treaty. It will also support private resource activity, as any resource removed from in place becomes the property of whoever did the work. This is the grand bargain. Private entities are granted private property rights in return for abiding by the public policies that will make space resource activity work for all. What are those public policy obligations? The model agreement identifies 10 of them, six of which involve sharing information. All but two of them are in the Outer Space Treaty already. One of those is the call to protect historic landing sites. The model agreement calls for protecting sites from the year 2000 or earlier until the state's parties establish a process for evaluating individual sites. The other obligation that is not in the Outer Space Treaty, but explicitly stated in the Moon Treaty, is the obligation to share information about the discovery of resources. Some consider such discoveries to be scientific discoveries that must be revealed anyway, while some argue that such discoveries by private entities are proprietary information and that requiring them to be shared would threaten the economic sustainability of private commerce in space. But if access to outer space resources must be shared, then keeping such discoveries confidential loses its monetary value, as it cannot form the basis of an exclusive claim. Keeping the discovery of resources secret will not benefit any one private entity, whereas sharing the information will help all of humanity. The rest of the Model Resource Agreement addresses related activities that will facilitate the development of outer space resources. Countries and their nationals will be required to register their activities, either using an upgraded registration convention or another process created by the state's parties. Countries are also mandated to work with non-governmental entities to develop standards and recommended practices, SARPs, for all aspects of outer space resource activity. The state's parties and their nationals will be obligated to protect the natural environment of the moon and other celestial bodies. Any areas of special scientific interest, including historic landing sites, will also be registered with a new or augmented process, perhaps by amending the current treaty that protects cultural heritage sites on the Earth. For dispute resolution, both the Outer Space Treaty and the Moon Treaty rely on consultation among the state's parties. The Model Resource Agreement also authorizes voluntary arbitration using rules and processes already developed for outer space disputes by the Permanent Court of Arbitration. The results of such arbitration would be enforceable under the Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Awards, the New York Convention. If the parties choose mediation, any agreement that the parties sign would also be enforceable under a similar convention. There is one topic for which no consensus is currently foreseeable, the collection and use of fees for outer space resource activity. Some might insist that this issue be addressed now under the principle that nothing is decided until everything is decided. But it may take years of confidence building for the parties to create some sort of supranational process for deciding how to collect fees, what to collect them for, and how to use them. Until then, there would be great benefit from an agreement that provides governance without a new government, establishing the minimum framework that is essential for the peaceful and sustainable development of outer space resources. The final paragraph of the Model Resource Agreement confirms that the controlling law, jurisdiction and control, at any location of space resource activity is the law of the country that authorized and supervises the activity there, as stated in both the Outer Space Treaty and the Moon Treaty. But it also clarifies 
that individuals do not lose any of their rights. If an individual seeks asylum at another country's installation, the jurisdiction of their country of origin does not travel with them. They cannot be pulled back against their will. But what of settlements themselves? Must they always be under the jurisdiction and control of their country of origin? The model agreement clarifies that any settlement will retain the right under customary international law to seek recognition as autonomous regions or even independent states. The hopes and dreams of future explorers and settlers must be protected even as we make the human presence in outer space economically sustainable. In summary, there is an increasing need to establish an international framework for outer space resource activity that will support private activity while still protecting essential public policies. It is possible to establish polycentric international governance without creating a new supranational government. The Model Resource Agreement does that, either as part of the Moon Treaty or, with minor changes, as a standalone document. Without such an agreement, we risk repeating the mistakes of the age of imperialism with all of its harmful consequences for humanity. These are challenging times. Every day, people wake up to news of the disastrous effects of climate change, worsening economic equality, racial gender injustice, assaults on democracy, and international conflicts. To that has now been added the threat of war in outer space. The people of Earth are beginning to despair wondering if there is anything they can really believe in. They are losing hope, and the resulting cynicism is poisoning our politics, our relationships, even our own thinking. The mission of space law must be nothing less than to restore that hope, to inspire humanity by giving the people of our planet a future they can believe in, to counter the despair of war and violence and neglect, to build that shining city on a hill that will light the way for all. At this moment in time, it is space law itself that needs capacity building. The current framework is inadequate, resulting in endless arguments over the meaning of outdated agreements. The time has come to craft a new agreement that will facilitate the peaceful and sustainable development of outer space. In the third decade of the 21st century, it is a resource agreement based on sharing and cooperation, perhaps as part of the Moon Treaty, that can provide the international framework that humanity needs to become a spacefaring species. For the full model agreement and a link to a Share the Moon petition, go to www.spacetreaty.org. Thank you for your time and consideration.